Okay, we had, oh, are you talking about the extra credit one? Yeah. All right. Um, what do you guys want to start on? So for your extra credit one, don't tell me what it is yet because I'm not sure how many of you did that one. Um, Luke, did you do number, did you do the extra credit? I did. Grace, did you do the extra credit? Yep. Colby? Yep. Lily? Yeah. Brian? No. No. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to have you guys send me your work best you can. Take a picture of it and send it to me or um, just like type in, tell me what you did and then what letter you got. Okay. You Wait, send one second. What page was it on? I maybe, maybe did not do it. It was on page 756. All right. Let me see. It was number six. Oh, number, yeah, I did. Just, like type it in like an email and then like send it to you? Like type what we did? Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you could say like I found the apothem and it was this and then I multiplied by that and then I found the triangles and I multiplied by this and I put stuff together and here's my final answer. It was letter blank. Okay. Yeah, I can just take a picture of all my work and then send it to you, right? Yeah, that's fine. See, and you don't, if you don't have um, like your your camera now or whatever, you can send it later today. Okay. Um, yeah, that one was kind of fun. Other than that one, you guys had page 760. So we um, went on to number 41, which was also multiple choice. You had to find the area of a square with an apothem of two feet. And then you could use the formula, area equals um, one half the apothem times the perimeter. And you would get what, Luke, for number 41? I got A. Good, A is correct. Apothem is two, the perimeter is four, or sorry, each side is four, the perimeter is six. If the apothem is two for your square, I'm just gonna draw a little picture here. All right. So if you say the apothem is two, like that, and then you break it up into a triangle, you end up with a 45, 45, okay? So your apothem is two, it makes this part of your triangle two, and I cut it in half, so that's two. So each side is four, all right? So one half apothem times perimeter, one half times two, and then the perimeter would be 16. And you multiply that together, you get 16 square feet A. All right. Are you guys okay with that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. 42, a picnic table shaped like a regular hexagon has sides that are X units long. Okay. So again, we could do area is one half apothem times perimeter. And Grace, what did you get for 42? I got D. D is correct. Good. Can you show so, me? Yep. Yeah. I kind of like half guessed. Okay. So we have, let me just do my drawing. We've got this hexagon. Obviously my hexagon is not going to be regular or look very much like a hexagon at all. Um, it's side units are X. Okay. So each side of my hexagon is X. So when I draw an apothem here, that's going to make an X over two. Okay. Because it, all it told me was side units are X. So when I draw the apothem, it's going to give me an X over two. Okay. And it is a hexagon. So I'm going to say 360 divided by six and my central angles will be 60. And then when I draw that triangle, remember it breaks it, it breaks this triangle up into a 30 degree angle. Okay, because that central angle, the 60 degree angle would be to here. All right. So 
My central angle is 60. When I make my triangle, it cuts that in half. So that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay. So my short leg is X over two. I need to know my apothem, which is my long leg. Short leg times root three. So my long leg is X root three over two. Okay, X root three over two. Because I just have to take my short leg and multiply it by root three. So I'm just gonna use the formula. Apothem is one half, or the area is one half times my apothem, X root three over two times the perimeter. Remember each side is X, because this, we said X, so this is X, there's six sides, so my perimeter is six X. One half times x root three over two times six x. I'm gonna multiply straight across and get, my area is six x squared times root three over four. Okay, and that's just multiplying straight across. Six x squared root three over four. And I can simplify that, I can, um, simplify six over four to three over two. And I'm going to move my X over. So it looks like there. So three over two times root three times X squared. Three over two times root three times X squared is D. Three root three over two X squared. Are you okay with that one now, Luke? Yep. Okay. Let's look at 43. A stained glass panel shaped like a pentagon has a side length of seven. What is the area to the nearest tenth? All right. So it's going to be similar to this one. Um, and that one's for Aristotle. 43. What did you get for that one? It wasn't multiple choice. 43, 42. Um, number 43. I didn't, I only did 41 and 42. Oh, on did, I, did I not say, did you do 43, Colby, or no? Yeah. I think, yeah. I oh, okay, what did you get for 43, Colby? I got, um, I got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he knew the answer. <laughs> That's funny. It's one way to get away. Um, Lily, what did, did you get for 43? Um, 84.3 square inches. That's it. Yes. 84.3. How did you do that, Lily? What did you do? So. I kind of guessed because <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Palmer. I accidentally clicked when I looked down at my book. And okay. it hit the X. It's okay. You guessed, and you guessed 84.3? Yeah. Did you guess by looking in the back of the book? No. <laughs> Do they have, I don't, I thought they only had the, I don't think the back of the book. Uh, I, I don't know, but that would be a pretty, I mean, crazy guess the to the nearest, to the nearest tenth. <laughs> well, it said to the nearest tenth, so I chose a random numbers. Wow, maybe you should play the lottery tonight. <laughs> okay, um, Colby, you're back. What did you get for 43? I, I got 84.3. Okay, how did you get that? All right, so you need, so the side length was seven. Yeah. So then you need to multiply it by two, right? To get... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your wait, no, sorry. Shoot, how did I do that? I hate it. I I, I have a bad habit of not writing my work. I just kind of do it on my calculator. Okay. All right. Um, 
so this one is a pentagon. Oh yeah. And remember, we can break them all up into triangles. So for this one, I only drew the triangle. We would have, okay. it would be five sided, but I drew the triangle. We would break it up into, drew the apothem from the center and that side length is seven. So I'm not going to multiply it by two. I'm going to divide it by two to get it. All right. How dare people walk down my street, right? My dog's just like, why are people outside? Okay. Um, so this one was a little bit different because this is a, so we made a 90 degree angle. It's a pentagon. So our central angle is 360 divided by five, which is 72. And then when I break that triangle in half, it makes, we have a 36 degree angle. So um, when I worked on this one, I don't know if you felt like I did, but I was like, oh, no, it's not a 30, 60, 90. But I still have to find my apothem. I need to know this right here. And I don't know it. And it's not a 30, 60, 90, so I can't use that. What can I use? Oh, I do have a 90-degree angle, uh -huh. but it's not 30, 60, 90. Oh, you can use the... um. Oh, what's it called? I know my opposite. I want to find my adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is tangent. Tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of 36 degrees equals 3.5 over x. How, why is it not a 30, 60, 90? Because it is a regular. Because um, it's a pentagon. So when I divide 360 by 5, I get 72. And then when I take half of it, I get 36. So a hexagon works out nicely with a 30, 60, 90. Um, yeah. And the other one, the square gives us, I think, the 45, 45, 90. But this doesn't. Okay. Yeah, I actually, when I did it, I said this angle's 54 and did tangent 54 is x over 3.5, but it shouldn't make any difference. Let's try it this way. Tangent of 36 degrees is opposite over adjacent, so 3.5 over x. So that means um, x times the tangent of 36 degrees equals 3.5 using cross multiples. Oh, that's why I changed it the other way. Um, because then I wouldn't have to use inverse, but we could do it. We could use inverse. So um, we could use x equals tangent inverse of 3.5 divided by 36 or no, x equals 3.5 divided by tangent of 36. It's not inverse. Oh, wait, right. I remember doing this now because I had Angela help me with it. Okay. All right, so I want you guys to try that because I, I did use it a different way. This isn't going to give us the answer. This is just going to give us the apothem. So try that's going to give you your apothem. Use your calculator. All right. And Luke, what did you get for X? 4.8. Yeah. 4.817 dot, dot, dot. Okay. Four, well, we'll just use 4.8. X is 4.8. That's our apothem. Now we just use our formula. One half times 4.8 times the perimeter. The side length is seven and it's a pentagon. So what's the perimeter, Grace? 35. Mm -hmm. Times 35. And you get what, Aristotle? 84. I feel yeah. like For the nearest 10th, I got 84.3. I just oh, got yeah. 84. Yeah. I, I still used the bigger number. Um, I didn't truncate it at 4.8. Whatever I had in my calculator, I hit divided by 2 times 35. 
So if you just got 84 when you cut it off, that's fine. Okay. That was good work. All right. So I think you guys got how to do that now. Um, and we talked a little bit about the next section. Well, it wasn't the next section. It was the section at the surface areas. 771, yeah. 771-1A. You have a rectangular prism with a base with dimensions of nine by four and a height of six. What is the surface area? With Mrs. And, Palmer. Um, yeah. So we have that mid chapter review due like soon, right? Well. Oh, yeah. it is for Friday. Um, yeah, page seven. What page that's on? Seven fifty. Okay. Yeah, that's your work for tomorrow, but I just had given it to you guys early in case you wanted to get an early start on it. Okay. You guys can just email me your answers or take a picture. I like when you take a picture um, and show me your work. Okay. Um, 1A, who wants to jump out and say what they got for that one? Um, Luke and Aristotle, my two geometry people. Let's see if you agree. Luke, what did you get? I got 228 feet. Square feet. What did you get, Aristotle? 228 square feet. Okay, good. Um, Luke, can you explain how you got it? Um, and I'll write it down so everyone can kind of look at it. Did, did you show your work? Uh, yeah. All right, what'd you do? Okay, so they gave us the formula, uh, like, earlier in that example. Mm hmm The surface area. Yeah, so that, so the perimeter of the base. So then, since it's a rectangle, mm -hmm. it's going to be 9, 9, 4, and 4. Mm hmm And then you just add those together. So then. And you got. Uh, 26. Yeah. 20, yeah, 26. Okay. 26, good. And then you multiply that by the height, which is 6. Okay. And then add that to 2 times the, uh, the, the area of the height, or the base. The area of the base, yep. And what's the area of the base? Um, 36. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Luke said he looked up above. And he solved this formula. Surface area equals the perimeter of the base times the height plus two times the area of the base. Okay. So he filled in what he knew. He said the perimeter, well, since it was a rectangle, nine by four, he said nine plus nine plus four plus four is 26. And the height they gave him was six. And then he's going to add two times the area of the base. The base is 9 by 4, so the area of the base is 36. So you have to do that math. 26 times 6 is 156. 2 times 36 is 72. Add it together, and you get 228 square feet. All right, I'll hold it up so you guys can copy the steps. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that one's kind of nice because it's a rectangle. I don't know who I am for time, but we're good for time to go over the next one. Okay. The next one was a regular hexagonal prism. Not as nice. Side lengths of five for the base and a height of 12. So, um, Raise your hand if you want to tell me what you got for number 1B. No. I got a no from Colby. Originally, I was confused because I didn't. It's it, now nah, it stupid. I, forgot, I have I, it I, halfway. I restarted it because I definitely. I got a number, but I think it's too high. Okay. Um, what's your number, Luke? 6,610 centimeters squared. And that's too high. Grace, what was yeah. your number? 
I only had half of the equation. No. I couldn't figure out. Okay. Aristotle, what was your number? I got 57, but that's not right because I did it backwards. So, like, I did, like, the formula for something I'm else. I'm pretty sure I know how to do it, but it would take some time. All right. Whoa. Let's let's try it. Um, are we going to use the same formula? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to say surface area equals the perimeter. It's a rectangular hexagonal prism with a side length of five centimeters for the base and a height of twelve. So what does a hexagonal prism look like? I think they show us one on page 770. That hexagonal prism. I think so. Okay. And kind of when they're showing us the lateral faces and they're showing us the bases. So it has a side length of five. I'm assuming that's the hexagon pieces for a base and a height of 12. Okay. So we're using. Formula perimeter times height plus two times the <coughs> area of the bases. Um, I get 519.9. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot okay. closer. Okay. We should be coming up with 490. Well, so what I got so far is all the way around, like not including the two hexagonal pieces, the surface area is 360. Because you do 12 times 5 times 6. Okay, so you're doing the pieces. Okay, and then you're going to do the hexagons. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working I'm, on that. Okay, all right, keep working. All right, let's all work on this one for a moment. Would it be possible to just do that for all of them? Just find the area of the pieces and add them together? That's, that's the way I, I like. Mean. That's the way I like to do them. And that's usually what I do. I'm just trying to incorporate the formula they're giving us. But um, when I do surface area, I just find the area of each of the surfaces. Yeah, I didn't. I haven't used the formula. Okay. Um, and you can see, like, for the first one that Luke used the formula and it did work. Um, but I, I normally don't use the formula. I'm trying to use the format for this one. Maybe the formula is easier. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Area of the bases. You have to use the formula for area of a hexagon. Okay, we could use the formula. Oh, all right. The well, formula well, that they give us up above, all right, perimeter times the height plus two times the area of the bases. So it tells us the hexagon has a side length of five and it has six sides. So the perimeter is 30. And then the height they gave us, that's 12. So that part's easy also. Plus two times the area of the bases. So the bases are hexagons. So I had to look up how to find the area of a hexagon. It's three root three over two times the side squared. Okay. So 30 times 12 is easy. That's 360. Plus two times three root three over two times 25 because a side is five and we do the side squared. 
25. All right. The twos end up canceling out. So we still have 360 plus 75 root 3. And when you add that all together, it's approximately 490. It's like 489 point something. All right. So you could write it down like that. And what, what is the answer? 425? For 1B, it is approximately 490. All right, because you have 360. And then you're adding, no, which I think that that's kind of, I think, what Colby said he was doing when he got the area of all of the rectangles. Isn't that what you did, Colby? Yes. You said five times 12 is 60 times six is 360. So that's basically what they're doing with the formula. And then you have to find the area of one of the hexagons and multiply it by two, because there's two bases. All right, so I won't give you guys anything else because you do have page 750 to work on. Um, and you guys know I'm here from two to three if you have questions and when you're working on it today. And also, if you have questions when you're working on it tomorrow, you can send me an email and we can go into a Google Meet if you would like. If you have questions and you need me to explain something to you. Luke? Um, if we come in uh, to the office hours for you, could could we show you the bonus number six? Yeah, yeah, but I'll be there between two to three, so you could tell me, um, show me your work for the bonus, and I can give you your extra credit points. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you. Do you have any questions for me? Okay. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.